Welcome to Module 4, What the Pay. This is Shamika Jones, your instructor, and I'm talking to you today specifically when we talk about pay, but I'm talking to you today about the payroll calculator. So a part of the package that you got, you got the option to have a payroll calculator, which will help you calculate pay, as well as calculate any expenses related to pay, along with help you figuring out what an ideal bill rate is, whether it's based on a percentage of the bill rate is what you'll pay your employees or a flat rate. So um, that's kind of the idea behind this course. So we're not going to go into detail about how to create your actual pay rates because there's a separate video and a presentation with that that's already out there. This is just going to talk about how to use a calculator, which will also drop with this video tomorrow. Hi, Diane. How are you? So Diane, I'm gonna just go ahead and get started. If you do have questions or anybody else has questions, you can drop them in the chat box here, or you can feel free to drop them in the comment section connected to the video that'll get posted tomorrow into the group. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, a big part of this presentation is gonna be sharing this and kind of walking through it. And I'll touch on some of the things that we already talked about with the um, creating your pay. So in, in the previous we talked about creating your pay, going to different websites to determine what an ideal pay rate might be for an employee in your area. And just because our course covers people throughout the United States, that's going to always look different. But for these purposes, we're mostly going to just be talking about registered nurses. So when we look at pay, we're going to be talking about the registered nurse and um, just a local registered nurse. I'll touch a little bit on the travel element midway through, but that's something that I would prefer to go one-on-one -on -one with people just because that allows you to get a more clear explanation, but I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So I'm gonna give everybody a few more minutes to jump in if you're gonna join us today, and then we are gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so you're not reading my face. Okay. So a glimpse of this calculator popped up into the last presentation. I'm just talk about the different boxes and elements of it. So when you see it in your in the group, this is kind of what you'll see. So this calculator is set up in two ways. We're gonna spend most of the time talking about the weekly calculator because that's how employees are traditionally paid by healthcare staffing agencies. So we're gonna stick with that way of payment. And then we'll also touch on and get a glimpse of an annual calculation that you can make and use for making um, projections. So when you get to the calculator, you'll see these white boxes here. And essentially, this is where you can make the edits. So the first box is your hourly bill rate, which we have set at $75 and it's per hour. And then your hourly pay rate to your employees and we have for this particular role $45. I encourage people to always use like a 40 hour bill rate unless the person is working in a hospital or a setting where it's 36 hours just because outside of like this section everything is tied to formulas. So once you complete these three boxes all of this information will auto populate and I'll show you guys a little bit of that on the other side momentarily. So we have the $75 as the bill rate, $45 as the hourly rate for someone who's working 40 hours a week. And essentially 60% of $75 is how we got the 45. So once you put this in, this will drop in and then kind of vice versa. And then you put this in and then all of this other stuff will kind of drop in. The next section talks about your weekly gross revenue staffing agency makes. So just like with your pay, your gross is before any deductions are made. So this is before you pay your employees. So in this case, $75 times 40 hours, which is your bill rate times your number of hours that the employee works, is $3,000 a week. Then you have to pay your employees. So the next step is deducting the $45 times 40 
um, it talks about some of the taxes or some of the additional fees you have to pay. So as employees, you do have payroll taxes. We hear a lot about that being talked about um, here with the coronavirus saying that they were going to stop, you know, employers having to pay payroll taxes. And it's just so that you can get a little bump up to um, limit your expenses. So taxes are paid through payroll on behalf of the employee as well as the employer. And these are some of your traditional percentages as well as some amounts. So these amounts are based on um, the amount that the employees pay. So you're only initially paying payroll taxes on the monies that the employee was paid. And then at the end of the year, you're paid taxes on any monies that the business has brought in. And some of your traditional ones are your Social Security, your Medicare, and then FICA, I'm sorry, not FICA, FUDA, your unemployment insurance. In this scenario, they also touch on your workers' comp insurance and your state unemployment insurance. So you have state and federal unemployment insurance that you would have to pay. And when we go to the real calculator, because this is just a slide of it, I'll show you some of those other things. So here, beyond like these first three or four things, um, this is where you can edit it to make sure it accounts for your particular um, state. So there are some states that have different amounts. So you would adjust your percentages here um, on the real calculator. And a lot of any of the adjustments that need to be made for the real calculator will have to be done on a one-on-one -on -one session on an individual basis because people are in different states. So I can't, so I give you kind of like a basic calculator and then we can walk through together how to make those adjustments so that you can have those expenses specific to your state. Again, we touched on this. I talk about creating a competitive pay package. You want to have a good bill rate. You want to factor in any agency fees a competitive rate for your employees, and then any perks as far as how you pay them. Um, setting your bill rate. So I've talked to with a few of you guys who are kind of at this place within the modules about setting your bill rates. And a big part of setting your bill rates is based on the pay rate. So because that can look different in different states, you want to start there first. So you want to look at salary.com, .com. You want to look at indeed.com. You want to look at um, pay.com and your local BLS to kind of find out what's the range of pay for registered nurses um, in my area. And for instance, where I live, the range of pay could be 40 to $45. But if say I was in another state in the Midwest or in a state that didn't have the same housing expenses, it might be 30 to $35. So that'll change a big part of what you bill. So of course, it's expected that I would bill higher because I would pay more. So um, again, we saw how the formula was used to take out, you know, the amount for the agency. So if my bill rate was $75, I just determined I want to do 60% of the bill rate to pay the employee. And that's how we got the $45. And there's ways that you can play around with the formula to do a different agency amount if you just want a specific um, pay. Like if you want to make sure your agency takes home after all the costs and expenses, $14 or $15, which is also just a different way of doing the same thing. Um, and then as usual, as I've spoken with you guys, on an individual basis before, you always want to set your pay um, either as a set pay. So you may say, hey, all my registered nurses in long-term care are going to make $45. And a big part of staffing, too, is that most staffing agencies don't have a range, per se. So you don't get additional monies necessarily for your years of experience as much as you get like a whole, a substantial amount more than you would make as a staff employee. Um, or you can set a range, you may say 45 to 50. So whatever you choose, but it's more beneficial that all your registered nurses in long-term care make a set amount. All of your registered nurses on MedSearch Chelly make a set amount. And that allows you to control a lot of your expenses and set a more accurate budget. 
Um, this is just an example, um, and I'll revisit this, but this is an example that you guys can use to kind of think through some of the things we talked about last week and this week about if you had a CNA in Maryland who's looking to make $16, $16 per hour, how much would you bill? So let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to put, so if I wanted to do the 60%, you know, whatever that number might be. So I don't want to take up time calculating, but just to kind of give you guys an idea to think about it. And then you also have the scenario, um, if I are in Arizona looking to make $50 per hour, how much would I bill? You might bill 100, you might bill 85, kind of depending on that percentage or place that you wanna stay. Um, this is an example of another pay package and this is a travel package. And as I mentioned before, we'll get into that a little bit more. So I'll come back to that. So let's take a quick glimpse at the real life calculator. Make sure we didn't miss anybody who wants to jump in. And as usual, um, I think we got a few people. Okay. Hi, Diane. Hi, Sheila. Hello. How are you guys? Great. How about you? Good. So if you can just mute your phones for me, I kind of got started um, just for time's sake. But as I go along, if you guys have questions, you can just jump on um, mute your phones and ask the question or you can um, comment or, you know, talk with me during the one on one session. But I did kind of get moving um, not too long ago. Diane, I think you were on. You must have gotten booted out. Yeah. OK, no problem. No problem. So I'm just going to see I over a couple of slides that we did from what a and I gave a quick look at the um, calculator, but this is just a screenshot and the different um, sections, but I'll kind of do the same thing to recap here at the real live calculator. Okay. So this is a calculator. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, and let me know if you can't see it. Okay, okay, there. So you should be able to see the screen because I'm sharing my screen. And um, some of the things I talked about was just that these sections here that you see here in the calculator are sections that you can edit. So I can change this to 80. And that'll say this is 44% or I can change this to 55. So some of this will be the features that you can adjust yourself. And then there'll be some things that are already built in that when we do a one-on-one -on -one session or whenever I connect with you guys, I can help you edit it just because all the members of the course are in different states. So I kind of give like a basic format for everybody to work with. And then we can work on things that will be state specific or things that you may want to um, consider including in it. So the PowerPoint, which I'll include in the um, Okay which I'll include in the um, saved video put it at the bottom, is um, on a weekly basis, but this one is actually on a monthly basis. So that's why you see the hours totaling out as 168, whereas when you look at the calculator, it's a weekly amount. So that's the difference. But some of that you can edit yourself or not. Um, some things that it talks about is so we decided we're going to just use this as an example to set our bill rate for this particular role at $80 an hour. And of that $80, 55 of it is going to go to the employee. 
Um, again, you can alter it how you want to here in these white boxes. But since it's monthly, it's totaling out 40 hours a week. So if a person worked 40 hours a week, give or take a day or two, they would on average work about 160 hours a month. And then this goes into talking about the monthly gross revenues the staffing agency will make, which is your 13440 And mind you, this is just for one person. Um, and then the monthly salary the staffing agency would pay to its employee. So that would be the 9240 And on here, these two pieces are percentages. So that's why when you saw me put something here, this change, and you saw me put something here, this change. Um, as well, this breaks down your Social Security, Medicare, workers' comp, state unemployment, federal unemployment in a monthly way. But when you're actually going into use a calculator or when you're paying employees, you're actually paying them on a weekly basis. And I'll, you know, circle back to that part of it in a little bit. So costs that you share with your employee to take into consideration. Um, so some of the shared costs include your Social Security. So employee pays Social Security. Your business, as a business owner, you pay Social Security through payroll, or they call it payroll taxes. Um, you also pay Medicare. And in this example, they used um, workers' compensation. So you can include that if you're paying it on a monthly basis. But that's why it has a star next to it, because that's something that you can take out and maybe you want to call it, let's put something else, vendor management. Fees. So if you wanted it to be, like if it was a flat rate, maybe it was 100 or so dollars. So it'll change as you go through. And then if your state unemployment insurance was a different amount, maybe it's $100. It'll make those adjustments or if you wanted to add in something else, um, like an, um, like if you wanted to say, oh, well, my office administration fee is about $2 a month. So you can make all those um, edits and you also do have to pay your federal unemployment tax. So that's something that you would share with your employee as far as cost and if you know what it is as a percentage so your social security and your medicare and your federal unemployment tax are all percentages and it changes every year if you already know you can just put them in here and then it'll change you know it'll continue to change everything um, based on the formula and then as we go down you also have some other pieces that you can add in here. And as I mentioned before, a lot of this is editable. You can add your business and operations tax, your licenses, city, you know, expenses that you pay to your business, pay to the city for your business. You can also add any employer medical insurance. You can include the part that you pay holidays and things of this nature. So these are all things that you can edit later um, to suit you as a business owner. So mostly just these top ones are the ones that you would manage and then you can kind of delete all of this. Mostly early on because it won't apply. Um, and I think I might have thrown off the computer calculations a little bit. Okay, so based on all the stuff that you put, and these can be changed, and all of the white boxes can be edited, it's showing that your agency is making a profit of $3,189, which is 24%, um, which is about average um, on this one applicant. So this one applicant who's making 40 hours um, 
40 hours per week, working 40 hours a week, brings in a gross revenue of 13,000. Of that 13,000, 6720 is going to her. Once you take out all your expenses, the agency is bringing home about 3,189, which is roughly about 24%, which is actually about the industry average or standard. And this is just for that one applicant. So um, when you think about, well, how much money can I make off an employee? You know, based on some of your expenses and things like that, making about $3,000 on an employee is about right. And what I try to tell people when it comes to, you know, recruiting and sustaining, a big part of it is your volume. So the higher your volume, so if you say you multiply that one amount times three people or times 10 people, you know, you might be looking at 31,000 instead of 3,000, or you might be looking at 300,000 or 60 or 90,000. Um, so that's kind of how it helps you project out a little bit. I know a lot of you guys are in that stage with um, workers comp and they're asking for projections. So that's a good tool to use on a monthly basis. And then this is another look at the same calculator and you can see at the bottom that's the difference on an annual basis. Again, this is just talking about one employee. Um, so again, these numbers are a little bit different. And for this, for this situation, I'm gonna leave it filled the way that it is and just kind of walk you through. So again, you're billing the client, your bill rate of that bill rate, $90. That's not right. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay, so of that bill rate, the agency is paying on a yearly basis, um, the applicant about $90, which is 58% of the bill rate. So this is where you see it annually. You're seeing the same pay rate because that's not going to change annually, but you're paying this employee about $90,000. And then they're working close to 2,000 hours, and this is still based on a 40-hour work week which is giving your agency a gross revenue of a close to 156,000. Again, all of those amounts that we saw that were monthly are now being totaled in to a yearly basis to kind of give you an idea. And then, you know, any business expenses, I tell people, you know, this is kind of an idea of any equipment expenses you have, any business expenses, any overhead costs, sales and recruiting, all things that you want to make sure that you're including in there, which will give you a total yearly profit of $34,000, $35,000 for that one employee, um, which is good. You know, it's about 22%. So when using a calculator, um, I suggest and tell people, you know, just play around and see, you know, see what different calculations you come up with. If you want to make a lot of different edits to your calculator during one of our one-on-one -on -one sessions, let me know so that we can do a Zoom meeting and we can actually walk through and make the edits together. Um, if you're using a back office, which I touch on a little bit here. So if you're using a... Um, a back office, if you're working with a vendor management system, all of those things you want to make sure that you include not only in your bill rate, but you also account for them here. So if you're using a back office um, to do your payroll and human resources, typically you know that that's going to be like two or three percent of your revenue. So you can take that out on a monthly basis. Um, vendor management systems are a little bit more variable but there is a way, and I can work with you to be able to um, calculate that as well. So um, that's a little bit of a glimpse of the calculator. And I know that I kind of shared with you guys to kind of come with some pay rates that you had in mind for your area, because I know both of you guys are in different areas. 
and we can play around with it a little bit if you'd like. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, definitely feel free to chime in. Um, but I wasn't going to use this particular session to go a lot in depth on pay or how to create your pay as much as once you've done the research um, in the process of, you know, finding out how much employees are making. want the bill rate to be, and I just use registered nurses for these purposes, um, registered nurses in your area. So did you guys have any questions for me? Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. Okay, so the calculator, so everybody knows the calculator along with this presentation of how to use it will be dropped into the group tomorrow. So everything will drop into the group tomorrow. The calculator, um, this video, and just so that you know, the calculator is a uh, Excel spreadsheet, so it's a Google Sheets. Um, so if you're not familiar with either one of those programs, I would encourage you to let me know so that that way, so that that way I can kind of walk you through. So are you guys familiar with, um, Google Sheets or are you guys familiar with Google Sheets or Excel? Okay, great. So if you're familiar with those, it operates very similarly. And um, when you set up your one-on-one -on -one session with me in the next week or so, I'll work with you to edit it so that it'll account for, you know, taxes that are specific you if you decide to use the management system or a back office or payroll funding you know kind of how you can add it in um, into your into your personal calculator um, so when you when the calculator is saved into the group I encourage you to go in and actually download it either into a folder or onto your desktop so that you won't be trying to pull up the generic calculator when you're making your calculations. Okay, so do you guys have any questions? No, okay, any, and like I mentioned before, It'll, the calculator will come out tomorrow with the video, download it, look at it, play around with it, you know, see the different calculations. And when you set up your one-on-one -on -one with me, we can customize it, talk about it more in depth, specific to your state. Okay, great. We can talk about it more in depth, specific to your state, um, so that you're able to use it more easily, as well as, uh, talk about pay. So I think both of you guys are kind of on track in that space as far as talking about pay. Um, so just check out the other video too to kind of research how to create your pay and then we can um, definitely go from there. But the video, the payroll calculator and everything will be saved onto the group tomorrow. Well, if you guys don't have anything, I do want to let you know on the 19th, 
I do want to let you guys know on the 19th, we're going to have Plax Capital with Amanda, which is a payroll funding company, come in and talk with us about payroll funding, as that's one of the options. If you want to use that just with our group. So if you can't catch the Zoom, okay. Yeah, Diane, I'll go over it again. Okay, yes, yes. That's fine. Um, check that out on Saturday. Okay, so I'll go back, Diane, and we'll take a look at the GSA. So I will say this much for the calculator. The calculator is really only talking about local candidates, and this is why. For your travel pay packages, um, you have to use the gsa.gov website to determine the meals and incidentals in housing. So that's why you can't really use a calculator for this purpose, but you'll still be billing the same. So if you have an applicant who's a traveler, the main difference between travelers and local employees is that travelers have the option to get the pay package where you see or you've heard about where part of their pay is tax free. And that's with the understanding that they have a separate tax home that they reside and they're coming to Virginia or Washington DC or Vermont or Maine to do an assignment for you for a period of time. So one of the things I talked about in the other video to make sure of is make sure you have documentation of that. And the main way that people document it is through your identification. And then there's also a affidavit form. that they would need to complete as well. And I'll save that onto the group so that you guys can have a copy. But it's just saying that, yes, indeed, I have a separate tax form. So the employee, so that the employee can verify that. So if I say, hey, I have a separate, separate tax home in Delaware and I'm doing an assignment in Maine, that would make me eligible for um, travel pay or a traveler's type of pay package. So there's three pieces to the traveler's pay package that you want to really be mostly focused on. That's the regular pay. So this is actually what they call the taxable pay. And then there's a non-taxable pay. So what people tend to focus on is the taxable pay, which should be lower because the intention is that the employee will be able to take home more money. So in this scenario, the taxable pay, so the part of their pay that will be taxed would be the $14. So if the bill rate is still, we're just going to use whole numbers. So if the bill rate is still, let's say the bill rate is $50, 14 of that they'll be taxed. And if you're paying them $30, let's say 15, 14 of that will be taxed. And then the difference is what you'll give to them through meals and incidentals and housing. A lot of times people get confused with um, meals and incidentals and housing because they use per diem. So that kind of throws it off. So I just say meals and incidentals and housing. So you're eligible to get a certain amount of money per day that you've worked while you're away from home to pay for your meals and incidentals. And that's the $77 per day that you see here. And then you're also eligible to get that same amount for your housing. So this is the understanding that you're going to take care of your housing. In instances where the company pays for the housing, this piece is typically not paid to the employee and they would just get the meals and incidentals and then their regular pay, whatever number that is. But let's take a quick look at the, I'm going to share my screen. So take a, let's take a quick look at um, the pay calculator. So this is kind of the example that we're going to work from that I was just talking about. So the person is going to get taxed on the $14 and then we're going to take a quick look at the 77 and 131. So I think this is a fairly old, at least a year or so old, so the rates may not look the same. 
but we're going to take a quick look. Anyway, so how to find these rates. So how did this company find these rates? It says $77.131 per day for meals and incidentals. You want to go to gsa.gov and they have, I believe they have an app in addition to this, but this is what I use because it's easier. So you want to access the rate. And this you understand. Okay, so when they say meals and incidental, each individual meal and incidentals might be paying for parking or other incidentals to come up with that amount. And it's based on where the person is going. So you go to the per diem lookup, and here is where you actually put the city and state that the person is going. And I think, from what I remember, this was Salisbury, Maryland. And then you want to put the state. And for a lot of it, it the state can either be you get a specific amount or you get the base amount. So there are certain states and areas in certain states that don't have higher um, meals and incidentals and housing rates. They have what they consider a base pay. Like West Virginia um, is one of those states where they, you won't see a different amount in every city, whereas West Virginia as a whole falls under what they call the base pay or base rates. Uh, okay. So let's look at the meals and incidentals first. And this is kind of where you see a lot of agents. Okay. Get it. So this would be that 55. And when you, so this is a total, you always want to put down the total. You don't want to break it down like this. You always want to kind of put down the total. So the total is saying this is the maximum amount that an agency can pay an employee who is considered a traveler because they're traveling out of their home state of residence to work for your agency. And a lot of the reason you see variations in it is because A lot of the reason you see variations is because not every agency is going to say, oh, well, I'm going to give this employee meals and incidentals at $55. They might say, oh, I'm going to give them meals and incidentals at 50 or I'm going to give it at 45 So um, that's where you see differences in different locations. So it's not to say that the employee can't get it as much as it's to say, hey, this employee can get a maximum of this amount. So for some agencies, they don't always give you the maximum amount. And then when we talk about lodging for that area, this is showing the 2019 rates. This is, again, the maximum amount. And you can see this is broken in by months, so different times of the year the amount can look different. In this case, it doesn't, but for a lot of states, and I'll give you a different example. For a lot of states, um, let's see, I'm gonna use Washington, D.C. It'll look different just so that you can see how at certain times of year it might look different for the lodging. So the meals and incidentals won't look that different, but for lodging during certain times of the year, it can look different. And again, this is a maximum. So this is a prime example of, you know, for the Washington, D.C. area, which covers these cities, and these cities are outside of the Washington, D.C. area in Maryland and Virginia. This is how the maximum amount of housing stipend you can provide to an applicant. So as you see in March, April, and May, and June, it's a lot more than it is in August and um, November and December. So these two numbers we mentioned here are numbers that as an agency owner, you can 
play around with as far as how much you provide. You always want to be within reason just because for individuals who are traveling, okay. Did you see the screen, Sheila? I see you put something here. Okay, perfect. For those individuals who are actually traveling, you wanna make sure that it's worth their while to travel to another state to be able to work. Um, as well, typically you're not paying the applicant more per se, it's more of you're breaking up the pay in a different way. So many, a lot of the time, both the applicant whether they're local or travel, is making the same amount of money. It's just that the applicant that is um, traveling away from home is making their piece, a piece of that money without taxes. So it appears as though they're making more, whereas your local applicants will be making all of their money taxed. All their money will be fully taxed. So, yeah, let's see. I'm going to drop this if you guys want to hold on to this website. So this is the best website to look at your DMs and your rates. So this will give you both the travel for meals and incidentals and housing. So it'll kind of combine both. So if you guys want to jot that down and kind of keep hold of that, and this really only applies for travelers. So for people who are local to your area, um, who aren't traveling outside of home, who don't have a separate residence, and some of it can be a little bit tricky when it comes to states that are close together, like New York and New Jersey or Pennsylvania and Delaware. So um, a lot of agencies have kind of maintained the industry standard of if your applicant is more than 50 mile radius, that's considered a traveler from home. So if I'm in New Jersey, but work in Pennsylvania and it's 10 minutes away, a lot of times people don't consider those travelers, but it is an industry standard to um, take into consideration the miles radius that they are from home is what you do. And it's whatever you decide, um, but the intention behind the meals and incidentals and housing rates is for people who have a separate home. So if you have your employees or applicants, which you may or may not know, returning home because it's across the street or it's down the street, then those people wouldn't typically be eligible um, for those things. And you just want to make sure that you document that they are indeed a resident of another state, that they verified via an affidavit that they reside you know, so many miles away from the property that they're planning to work at um, so that if at any point you're audited by the IRS that is properly reflected as well. You also want to make sure that your taxable bill rate that we looked at here, I'm going to go back. So this taxable bill rate isn't under a certain amount. So for some agencies, if you're making their taxable bill rate nine, eight dollars, in some states that's less than minimum wage. So nurses don't work for less than minimum wage. So you kind of have to play around with the numbers, but I tell people, you know, keep it fair and then make this the difference. Um, I've seen bill rates as low as $10 or $12, but you're putting yourself in a gray zone um, when you're doing that. and. Um, it just makes you susceptible to um, get flagged. So for a nurse, a licensed practical nurse, a registered nurse, you know, to have a 15, 16, 17, $18 bill rate, I mean, or pay rate that's taxable is reasonable. And then kind of the difference would be, you know, the meals and incidents and housing up to the maximum that you saw on GSA. So I'm going to show you guys that again. I think I jumped out of it. So this was kind of the breakdown, and like I mentioned before, can you go ahead and put your phones on me for me? Okay. 
Thank you. So this was the example when I was saying about the traveler package. So again, the package is really based on helping you kind of come up with some different scenarios when you think about how much you want to bill and how much you want to pay. I encourage you to go ahead and do a lot of the looking at the different websites to see how much the average pay is for your area and then use a tool to kind of play around with the numbers and how it works. I'll give everybody during our one-on-one -on -one sessions the opportunity to work with me to tailor the calculator to meet your state specific needs. And most of the white boxes here are editable. So you can put in different numbers. Um, and then you'll see the different pieces of it change and the amounts change. Um, as well as you can add in any additional um, fees or taxes that you might have that is specific to your state or if you're using a vendor management system or payroll funding company, you can add in those here um, as fees that you pay as an employer. Um, other than that, um, did you guys have any questions for me? Right, so Diane, I was just sharing the screen of the calculator and all of this will be um, posted into the group tomorrow. So this is, so what you see on the slides is a weekly. This is an actual monthly calculator breakout and then annually. So this will help you guys with also making some of your projections um, for payroll um, and costs and things of that nature. And I already say on the bottom box, the per diem, and this per diem rates, housing, mills and incidentals, only apply for people who are nurse or healthcare travelers. So that's a little bit separate. So this isn't gonna be the information related to healthcare travelers because it's, being a healthcare traveler, the rates are, the pay rates break down is based on where the person is going. And then I kind of talk about the difference, where you, the things that you have to consider um, when you're putting together that package. Any questions, guys? If you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. As I mentioned before, where do you find the pay rates? Okay, yes, Diane, go ahead and do book the one-on-one -on -one and we can customize your calculator. Sheila, you're saying, where do you find the pay rates? So in the other, in module four, where I talk about what the pay, I talk about creating your pay rate. So I talk about going to salary.com, indeed.com, social media, Department of Labor to kind of find out what the base pay rates are for registered nurses in your area. And that's the best resource for you um, so that you're not just kind of guessing what the rates are. And then from there, that's what you'll plug into the calculator and it'll, you know, shoot out different percentages and things like that. All right, so if you guys don't have any questions, just remember to set up your one-on-one -on -one. Um, with me. I think we have a couple of slots still open for Saturday and then we can go over it and kind of customize it. As I mentioned before, go ahead and figure out how you want to what you want your pay rates to be. I don't go into specifics about what your pay rate should be for your state because everybody is from different states. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the pay for Delaware is different from Massachusetts, different from Texas, different from Florida. So just do the research and then you'll be able to come up with a number. And when you do the one-on-one -on -one with me, I'll talk with you and kind of walk through um, how to set the bill rate and use a calculator, okay? All right, you guys have a great evening and I'll be talking to you. Thank you.